Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. I want to thank the entire Cabot House community for the opportunity to address you all this afternoon. It is an honor to have been selected as the Cabot student speaker for our commencement ceremony this afternoon, and I'm, I'm humbled by this responsibility. We are told that our admission to Harvard College attests to our innate potential, which this afternoon's commencement confirms. However, let us momentarily overlook the glitter of Harvard Yard and the allure of our achievements and accolades. This afternoon, without trivializing our graduation from Harvard College, I want us to reflect on our sources of validation. How do we validate ourselves? How do we validate others? Harvard can feel like a zero-sum game. We have inevitably competed directly and indirectly with one another in pursuit of external validation. And despite our greatest efforts, many of us have struggled to rise above the fray. What do we seek from our ceaseless strivings? Is it the satisfaction of achieving our objectives, the smug contentment of one-upsmanship, or simply an enduring fear of failure? Once we transcend these hallowed halls, we are faced with a choice. Do we continue playing along, or do we rise above the influence? My fellow Kabotians, let us not pursue achievement merely as a means to external validation. Rather, let us validate ourselves and our neighbors fully and unconditionally, as we have here at Cabot House. In many ways, residential houses are like families. We are lotteried into our houses just as we do not choose our own families. We are stuck with both, but we choose how to treat one another and ourselves. Our three-year history at Cabot House is a testament to the transformative power of validating ourselves before securing external validation. We have always taken pride in Cabot, even when naysayers perpetually disparaged our community. In the spring of 2010, as we anxiously awaited being placed into one of 12 residential houses on Housing Day, the Harvard Crimson ranked Cabot House 11th of 12 houses in their annual flyby rankings. Despite this discouraging ranking, I was pleasantly surprised on Housing Day when a school of Cabot fish inundated Cabot Candidate E11 common room cheering in a resounding chorus, damn, use a sexy fish. <laughs> our sophomore year, we entered Cabot House along with our beloved housemasters, Stephanie and Rakesh. That spring, Flyby ranked Cabot House dead last due to our, quote, distance from the yard and decentralized buildings. In the absence of external validation, we were faced with a choice to accept Flyby's arbitrary ratings and perhaps transfer to river housing, or remain proud Kabotians despite our unfavorable reputation on campus. During our three years in Cabot, we refused to believe the hype. We never allowed Flyby or anyone else to determine how we experienced and perceived our community. Through triumphs and tragedies, Cabot remained a unified, cohesive family. We celebrated winning the Green Cup two years in a, row, in a row for reducing our carbon footprint. We included all members of our community in our annual celebration of the holiday season, Festivus. During moments of fear and confusion, we found solace and solidarity in our Cabot family. Together, we grieved when Billy's sister Crystal passed away as a result of the marathon bombings. I can attest to the unconditional love of our Cabot family, particularly during some of the most trying moments of my undergraduate career. Last fall, as I battled both mono and thesis, for two miserable months, I was encouraged and inspired by my peers here in Cabot House. Whether thesising seniors, survivors of the infamous mono monster, neither or both, many Kabotians, especially you, members of the class of 2013, came to my rescue. As a graduate of Cambridge Ridge and Latin High School, my Cabot family comforted me as I anxiously awaited Jakar's capture and remained glued, catatonic, to my television. In both obvious and subtle ways, 
Advertently and inadvertently, many of you gave me the strength to persevere during these difficult times. You treated me like family when I needed it most. Our dog and determination to have pride in our community was once again tested last spring when Cabot received a disheartening, if marginally improved, ranking, 11th. <laughs> Yet in the absence of external validation and amidst persistent invalidation, we steadfastly affirmed ourselves. Stephanie and Rakesh continue to invigorate house life through their support of student-driven projects such as Cabot Cafe, the Cabot Theater Company, and Cabot Art Space, making Cabot House the dynamic community we are proud to call our home. Finally, after three years defending our honor from naysayers, Cabot received the praise it was due. This spring, Cabot was ranked fifth. Flyby reported, quote, Cabot has simply been underrated. <laughs> yes, it's in the quad, but Cabot's large singles, abundant facilities, beloved housemasters, and overall pleasant atmosphere make it one of the more appealing houses on campus. Why do I share the history of our flyby rankings with you this afternoon? Hopefully, by now, you realize that my intention is not merely to pat us on the back for finally achieving an exceptional house ranking. Certainly, it is natural to seek external validation, and we are warranted to celebrate it. But I want to make one point abundantly clear. Cabot House has always been exceptional. Cabot was exceptional before we received our due recognition, and we will remain exceptional once we've been demoted in Flyby's rankings. But what makes us exceptional? It is not our newly renovated gym or our collection of antique Steinway pianos. It is not even our cafe. Cabot, what makes us special is that we choose to validate ourselves in the absence of external validation. We have loved ourselves and our community fully and unconditionally, even when our peers doubted us. Here at Cabot, we have loved our neighbors as ourselves. I understand our house motto, Semper Core, to mean that in the absence of all external validation, we always have the choice to unconditionally love our neighbors as ourselves. In Cabot, we validate one another without pretense or prerequisites, as Stephanie said. Take a look at your peers. You may be blockmates, you may have never had a conversation before, but you both call Cabot home. One senior reported that Cabot does not have, quote, an oppressive house spirit. Our validation does not preclude the validation of others, both inside and outside our community. On housing day, as we dorm storm, we enthusiastically welcome new fish to Cabot, but we never put other houses down. We refuse to shine at the expense of others. Cabot House, class of 2013, we never needed external validation to validate ourselves. So let's not wait to be validated, or even expect that we will be. Today, we've graduated from Harvard College, and yes, we do deserve to celebrate. But let's not get it twisted. We've always been exceptional. We weren't made exceptional the day that Harvard admitted us, and we aren't any more exceptional now that we've graduated. As we leave Cabot House, let's remember this vital lesson. Don't let the powers that be dictate your self-worth or the worth of those around you. Rather, let's love ourselves and our neighbors unconditionally, always. Thank you, Cabot. Semper Corp.